So are music videos bad for our children's health? With me to talk about this is music journalist Will Lavin, who specialises in writing about hip-hop. But Will, what do you think? Is smoking and drinking in music videos really a health hazard? Are nudity and bad language worse? I'm not sure if uh, alcohol and smoking is... Uh, I, well, kids in general are impressionable. And like the uh, VT just said, that smoking and drinking is uh, an all-time low in terms of children in general. Is it an all-time low in music videos, in hip-hop? Um, I would say, well, the thing is this, is, this is what I wanted to get across. Most people say it's hip-hop videos, it's R&B videos, but it's in other genres as well. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, with R&B, especially with the type of music that's out now, there are a lot of club records. So a lot of the music videos are filmed in clubs where there is alcohol, there is smoking and things like that. But those videos are directed at adults. They're not directed at teenagers. It's the stuff that's directed at adults that the teenagers invariably want to watch. I mean, they were very sensible young people we spoke yes, to in, in the report there, but they you were. do wonder those others who perhaps are impressionable. I mean, think back to when you were first discovering hip hop. Right. What were you going and trying to get your hands on? For me, a lot of the time it was fashion, um, but if I saw, you know, in a Wu-Tang video, somebody drinking a 40, yeah, I wanted what, a 40. What is a 40? 40, 40 it's a, it's ounce a, It's a 40 ounce of beer. Right. So I, I, I saw all of this and I wanted to know what it was. Um, I had an inquiring mind. I wanted to, you know, test it out. But I think that now it's almost become just natural because it's not just music videos. It's movies as well. Um, social media, it's just free range to talk about anything. Mm. On the internet now, because technology is so advanced, if kids aren't going to get it on YouTube, they're going to get it somewhere else. So where does the responsibility lie? Because if you think about videos like Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke, <laughs> I mean, well known. Two versions were filmed, right? Yep. One that's pretty raunchy and one that's slightly less so. But even so, the whole thing is suggestive. A huge song. Is it his responsibility, knowing full well this is a, a, a mega hit or you know one on the cards, to not have this kind of video attached to it? Um, well, I think that if we want to talk about that, then there's the creativity aspect. So are we telling artists that they can't create what they want to create? So um, whoever directed that video would have had the conversation with Robin and said, are we going to do this? You know, let's try this out. I guess he, it and he wanted to. So is it Robin's, is it actually his responsibility? Well, I guess what it boils down to is who is pop music really for? Well, would you class Robin Thicke as pop music? Because what is pop music? Pop music is popular music, but Robin Thicke stems from soul and R&B. Well, a, a court class that as Marvin Gaye's, actually. The, yes, they did. The end, that's very they? true. But that's a side issue. Will, uh, we haven't got much time to talk more, but many thanks for coming in. No problem. Thank it. you very much.